Welcome to Slayer the Alchemist, and uh, I'm back. I was away for a few weeks there dealing with a uh, health-related thing, uh, nothing serious. I'm, I'm on the men's, and, uh, and I'm glad to be back. And I thought it would be fun to start up again with a video series that I've been wanting to do uh, for a while now, and I'm going to be calling it Rank Em If You Got Them. This is where I'm going to be ranking the vinyl records uh, that I own from particular artists. So I thought I would start with something easy today. I'm going to be doing Twisted Sister. Twisted Sister has five studio albums. I own four of them. I'll show you them here in a second. You may say, well, why don't you just do them all? Well, part of it is, is some of the other artists I'm going to be doing, like I'm going to be doing Aerosmith soon. And I really have no interest in listening to, and maybe this is short-sighted of me, uh, not listening to their 90s and 2000s stuff. Uh, but and I enjoy uh, the albums that I have on vinyl. I find I'm more engaged when I'm listening to it on, on vinyl. I like taking out all the albums from an artist. I clean them off. I listen to them. I just really get into it. So I thought it would be more fun to rank the albums that I have by particular artists. All right, so I'm starting with Twisted Sister. Here's the Twisted Sister albums that I own. These are in the order that... Uh, they came out, so Under the Blade, this came out in uh, 82. Can't Stop Rock and Roll came out in 83. Stay Hungry came out in 84. And uh, Come Out and Play came out in 85. This was the uh, the era when bands released an album every year. Uh, Love is for Suckers, I have heard that. You know, Maybe at the end here I'll say where I think I would insert Love is for Suckers if I had it on vinyl. Uh, I really like Twisted Sister. I've made a bunch of videos on Twisted Sister. I'll link my other Twisted Sister videos down below where I kind of talk about each one of these albums. Each album gets sort of their own uh, episode. I think Dee Schneider is a great singer. I think that he's also a really great songwriter. Uh, what held back Twisted Sister for me early on was the look. Uh, and I always felt that they looked way, way cooler like this, just in kind of the denim and leather look, and I never liked this uh, this look. I mentioned that in another Twisted Sister video I made, and somebody left a comment like, oh, you're being shallow, and all this other stuff, it's about the music, and I agree with that, but when you're 12 years old, stuff like that is important, and I didn't want to hang pictures of Twisted Sister on my wall, I just didn't. I, I didn't like the way they looked, I liked the music, but it held me back from really, really getting into them back then, and it really wasn't until later on that I really started to appreciate them more, because in my mind, their look was kind of a barrier for me. It only, I liked them, but it prevented me from really, really uh, getting into them, and later on, I realized, like, what a great... Uh, what a great band uh, they are. Uh, I remember when I, uh, I've talked about this, how when I first started to get into hard rock and heavy metal, I used to listen to college radio stations and they used to play a lot of the early Twisted Sister stuff like Under the Blade, You Can't Stop Rock and Roll. This was before Stay Hungry even came out. Uh, so I knew about them and really liked them, but it wasn't until I started seeing the videos on MTV and everything like that. Okay, uh, here's how I would rank the four that I've got. Uh, number four for me would be Come Out and Play, uh, even though it's got sort of this interesting cover. I just don't think this is a good record, and I think it suffers from the sort of the sequel, you know, great movie, bad sequel uh, thing. Stay Hungry, super successful. This album tries way too hard, I think, to recreate uh, the what made Stay Hungry successful, and this happens to a lot of bands. They have a big hit. They try to reproduce that hit. Problem is, is the album that they had the big hit with, they just did that naturally. It was, they didn't think about it. They just did it. It happened. And then when you start thinking about it and you start forcing it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work the same. It doesn't come across the same. So that's really what is all over this record for me. There's a lot of bad songs on here. Be Cruel to Your School. Uh, Leader of the Pack. I made a video on like bad cover songs, and I'm pretty sure I put that on there. You know, Twisted Sister was a band that duked it out in the club scene for like a really long time before they had their break. Uh, was something like 10 years they were out and very popular in the clubs, and that apparently was one of the songs that they used to play in the clubs that really went over. Doesn't translate at all on the vinyl here. Listening to the guys like, hey, is she going out with him? You know, and with their New York accents just sounds so stupid. Uh, and, and again, Twisted Sister is one of these bands. You almost feel bad for them. They, they, 
they're in the clubs forever. They 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 get signed. Their first two records don't do a lot. Stay Hungry explodes, goes supernova, and just as quick as it goes up, it comes down and it crashes uh, pretty hard on this record. Uh, but there is some stuff that that works on it. Come out and play. I think is good. I believe in rock and I don't really like I believe in rock and roll again it's like it's forced like they're trying to create this sort of anthemic thing that they had with we're not going to take it same thing with I believe in you that's another one it's kind of like I want to rock you know we're not going to take it uh killer be killed is okay I guess out on the streets is okay but I don't know this is album just falls flat for me I would give this a four out of ten okay uh kind of surprised when I when I thought about doing this I pretty much had all the albums in my mind like okay I know where all these are going to land but then as I sat and listened to them come out and play landed exactly where I thought it was which is at the bottom for me but the the next three really got shuffled around and this is what I had at number one initially in my mind you can't stop rock and roll and it fell down to uh, number three for me and I was kind of surprised the mix on this isn't as good as I remembered it being. Uh, Stuart Epps, it's produced by Stuart Epps. It's just kind of dull sounding or something. Don't know if it's just you know, the pressing that I have. I mean, this is just an Atlantic Records pressing. Uh, there's some great songs on it. The Kids Are Back, Like a Knife in the Back. Uh, I Am I Me, I really like that. That's kind of very melodic, kind of where they would go with the sing-songy uh, stuff on uh, Stay Hammer. The Power and the Glory is great. Uh, I've had enough. It's okay. I'll take you alive. I like that. I love "You're Not Alone," Suzette's song. Uh, I think D again. I think he's a great songwriter, and he he writes a really great ballad. And "You Can't Stop Rock and Roll" is my favorite Twisted Sister song. Uh, it's just that's it's just a great anthemic, hard rock, heavy metal song. I uh, love the video for it and everything, but the production drags this down. It just there's a couple songs on here. They're just. I don't know, just didn't really do as much for me. So I was surprised at how inconsistent this record is. But I would still give this an, an 8 out of uh, eight out of 10. All right, next for me, number two is going to be, and this uh, may, may be a little surprising, but uh, Stay Hungry. And you could say, well, it landed there for you because of burnout factor. Uh Yes and no. I mean, I certainly don't ever want to hear I want to rock and uh, we're not going to take it again. But even at the time when this came out, again, I had been exposed to them. I don't think I owned You Can't Stop Rock and Roll before I got this, but I had heard them on uh, college radio. And I remember thinking, like, I want to rock. And, and, and uh, uh, it, it, it just it sounded very, uh, and we're not going to take it, it sounded very kiddie like kid songs. They sounded like kid songs to me. The videos didn't help the situation any. They're very cartoony, the videos. And you may say, again, you may say, like, well, you know, you shouldn't pay attention to those things. But those things make a difference. The first time you hear a song and maybe you're hearing it through the videos, like I was with these, and it's hard to get those visuals out of your head. So those songs drag it down a little bit. But there is some great, great stuff on here. Stay Hungry is fantastic. I love Burn in Hell and Captain Howdy is, is great. Street Justice, I love that whole thing there. Uh, the Price, a great, great ballad. I love that right up there with Suzette's song. You're not alone. Uh, Don't let me down. That one's okay. The Beast is really good. I love SMF. So really strong record. It's just that I want to rock and we're not going to take it. Drags this down slightly for me. Uh, And not really even uh, considering the burnout factor. But I just think that those songs are too sing-songy for me. And I'm a guy that really likes melodic sing-songy type stuff. Like first, I like I Am I Me. But for whatever reason, I don't know. I want to rock. We're not going to take it a little bit too much. Oh, all right. Uh, number one for me. And this kind of surprised me. This I originally had this at number three. I had uh, You Can't Stop Rock and Roll at number one. And I had this at number three. But man, when I listen to this record, this is just a great, great record. Now, I should note that I, I, this is the 85 mix of it. They released this in 82 on like a small label. And uh, when Stay Hungry went big... Uh, it, I guess Atlantic, right? Atlantic uh, remixed it. And I actually think that the original mix is not very good. Uh, so maybe I'm grading this on a curve uh, because the mix on this is really good. I mean, it's right there with with Stay Hungry. But basically every song on this on this, on this this one just just kicks. Uh, what You Don't Know, No Sure Can't Hurt You, Bad Boys of Rock and Roll. Again, that's got that sort of 
melodic sing-songy thing, but it works for me here. Uh, Run for Your Life is great. Sin After Sin, I love it. Shoot Him Down, another kind of fun fist-in-the-air sing-along song. Destroyer is great and, and real heavy, almost doomy. Under the Blade, fantastic. Tear It Loose, so that one's okay. I'll Never Grow Up Now, maybe that's a little bit too much like the Kitty Rock direction they would go on a stay hungry day of the rockers is cool though so i just like this the mix on this it's got a ton of energy and uh i was just surprised so this one landed up at at number one for me all right there you go my ranking of uh my rank em if you got them of the twisted sister albums that i own number one uh under the blade number two uh stay where stay hungry there's stay hungry stay hungry Number three, you can't stop rock and roll. And number four, come out and play. Now I mentioned Love Is for Suckers. I, I would I would put Love Is for Suckers before Come Out and Play would have been number five for me if I did Love Is for Suckers too. I actually like that. I think that record is pretty good. It was supposed to I believe it was supposed to be a D. Schneider solo album. But again, I think he's a great songwriter. And whereas on Come Out and Play, it sounds forced, like they were trying to reproduce what they did on Stay Hungry. Uh, Love Is for Suckers, even though Kind of doesn't sound like a Twisted Sister. It does because it's Dee Snyder and he writes all the songs anyways. But it, it is missing some elements of Twisted Sister. But all right, that's my rank them if you got them of the Twisted Sister albums that I own. Let me know what you think of my ranking. Where would you guys put Love is for Suckers? Let me know down below. Till we see you again. Make sure you stay heavy, stay metal.